Hello, and welcome to my sequence of lessons on thesis or dissertation chapters. In the previous lesson, we have discussed about part one of chapter four, which include how to write the results, interpretation, and discussion of your thesis. Hence, if you want to know about them, take a look part one of chapter four, and I will put the link in the description box below. In this lesson, I will discuss the five most common assumptions of linear regression, which are linearity, multicollinearity, homocedasticity, autocorrelation, and normality. Secondly, I will show how to detect the problem and, finally, I will suggest some mechanisms to fix the problems. Thus, Stay with me till the end of my discussion. And if you are new to my channel, please subscribe and hit the notification button to get my latest discussion. Thank you. Before proceeding to our today's topic, first, it is better to have a quick review on regression analysis. Regression analysis is an inferential statistical technique used to model and analyze the relationship between a dependent variable and one or more independent variables. It shows the effect of independent variable on dependent variable, which is the outcome variable. Thus, to ensure the validity and the reliability of the regression analysis results, we have to conduct assumption tests. Or before conducting regression analysis, our data must pass the five common regression assumption tests. Here, we have to test or check whether our data is suitable to the linear regression analysis or not. If we detect a problem in our assumption tests, we have to fix the problem before conducting linear regression analysis. Otherwise, the output of the regression analysis will not be valid and reliable. Following this, our interpretation and discussion will have a problem. Linearity is the first assumption of linear regression model. As we know, the core premise of linear regression is the existence of a linear relationship between the dependent and the independent variables. From the name of linear regression model, we can conclude that there must be a linear relationship between the dependent variable and the independent variables. Hence, the best fit line of a linear regression model is a straight line, which is most suitable for linear data distribution. If this basic assumption of linearity is violated, both the coefficients and standard errors become unreliable. Standard errors describe the variability across multiple samples of a population. As you see from the linear equation, y is the dependent variable which is the outcome variable that depend on x. X is the independent variable. Beta 0 is the y-intercept. Beta 1 is the coefficient. E is the error term. Detecting linearity. To detect the presence of linear relationship between dependent and independent variable, we can just visually inspect the scatter plots of dependent variable and independent variable. Thus, as you see from the figure, in the first case there is a linear relationship between the dependent and independent variable. Because as you see, most of the observed data are close to the straight line. But in the second case, the pattern of the data doesn't follow the linear relationship. Hence, we have to fix the problem of nonlinearity before moving to further analysis. The best way to fix the violated assumption is incorporating a nonlinear transformation to the dependent and or independent variables. You may use different transformation as per the shape or pattern of the observed data. Example, log transformation, square root transformation. In using transformation, we have to be very careful in interpreting the results. Which means, before interpreting the results, First we have to reverse the transformation, because it is not possible to interpret the transformed data results directly without back transformation. Multicollinearity is the second assumption test, as we know the correlation between the dependent variable and the independent variable is expected. Because there is a causal relationship between them, however, it is essential that the independent variables are not too highly correlated with each other. That is the correlation coefficients between them should be ideally below 0.8. If two independent variables are highly correlated with each other, there will be a problem of multicollinearity. If multicollinearity exists in our data, there will be a problem in the regression model to isolate the individual effects of each independent variable on the dependent variable. The effect of individual variables cannot be clearly separated. Because there is an overlap between the highly correlated independent variables, as a result, 
Multicollinearity can make it difficult to interpret our model's coefficients. Having said this, now let me explain how to detect multicollinearity. Multicollinearity can be checked by using the following ways. The first method is correlation matrix. If the Pearson's bivariate correlation values among all independent variables are less than 0.8, then there is no problem of multicollinearity. If the correlation values between two independent variables is greater than 0.8, then there is a problem of multicollinearity. The second method is the value of variance inflation factor and tolerance. The VIF of the linear regression is defined as VIF equals 1 divided by tolerance, or VIF equals the reciprocal of tolerance. Thus, if tolerance value is less than 0.2, or VIF, is greater than 5, there might be multicollinearity issue in the data. If tolerance is less than 0.1, or variance inflation factor greater than 10, there will be a multicollinearity issue in the data. After identifying the presence of a multicollinearity issue, it must be addressed before proceeding with further analysis. There are three approaches to resolve multicollinearity. The first method involves removing one of the correlated variables that have high VIF value, as a high correlation suggests redundancy between the independent variables, making it feasible to eliminate one. The second approach is to combine the highly correlated variables into a single variable. The third assumption for a linear regression model is homocedasticity, also known as constant error variance. To understand this, it's essential to know what residual error refers to. A residual measures the vertical distance of a data point from the regression line or prediction line. In other words, a residual represents the difference between a predicted value and the actual observed value. In simple term, the residual is calculated as the observed value minus the predicted value. Homocedasticity or constant error variance, involves examining the distribution of residuals to ensure they have equal or nearly equal variance along the regression line. In simple terms, homocedasticity indicates that the residuals or error terms should exhibit a consistent variance or evenly distributed across the axis. If the residuals are not evenly spread, it indicates a problem of heterosedasticity. The following examples illustrate the presence or absence of heterosedasticity in our data. In the first figure, we can see that the residuals are evenly distributed along the axis, indicating constant error variance. Therefore, there is no issue of heterosedasticity. However, in the second and third figures, some patterns in the residuals can be observed along the axis suggesting that heterosedasticity is present in our data. This is a graphical method for detecting heterosedasticity. Besides, there are some statistical tests to detect the heterosedasticity problem in our data. For example, it is possible to use Park's test and broish pagan test. Once we detect the problem of heterosedasticity in our data, so, we have to fix this problem before conducting further analysis. The common methods that can be used to fix heterosedasticity are the following. The first method to reduce heterosedasticity is log transformation. As per the shape or pattern of the observed residuals, for example, a curved distribution can be converted into a linear distribution or straight line by simply applying the log function to it, or as per the pattern or shape of errors across the axis. Other transformations may work out as well. Besides, the other method to remove heterosedasticity is to work with shorter intervals of data in which volatility or variance is more nearly constant or little variation. As you see in the figure below, within the shorter interval, there is constant variance across the axis. The fourth assumption test concerns autocorrelation or dependent error terms. This test expects that each residual term is not related to the residual term that comes before or after it. In other words, there should be no correlation between consecutive errors. This means that the differences between expected and actual values should be independent of each other. In a linearly distributed dataset, the residuals should not influence one another. On the contrary, the dependency or correlation between the consecutive error terms indicates that there is autocorrelation problem in our data. Autocorrelation is most often found in time series data and not so prevalent in regular cross-sectional datasets. 
As practical example, autocorrelation measures how much influence past prices for fuel have on its future price. Which means, the correlation between the consecutive price of fuel indicates the existence of autocorrelation problem. To detect the problem of autocorrelation, commonly used method is the Durbin-Watson test. When applying this test, the Durbin-Watson statistic ranges from 0 to 4. A value of 2 suggests zero autocorrelation, indicating no autocorrelation issue in our data. The values below 2 indicates positive autocorrelation, while values above 2 suggests negative autocorrelation. After knowing the existence of autocorrelation problem, we have to fix it before further analysis. By using the following methods, one is by transforming the data using log transformation, square root, or inverse. The second way is including lagged variables. Lagged variables are values of a variable from previous time periods. For example, you might include the sales of the previous month as a predictor of the current month's sales. Normality of residuals. It is the fifth assumption test for conducting regression analysis. To ensure this assumption, the residuals in the model should be normally or evenly distributed. Violations of normality can arise from factors such as outliers, skewness, or heavy-tailed distributions. Generally, this assumption is considered as a weaker assumption for linear regression models. As a result, slight or even significant violations of normality can often be overlooked during modeling. This is particularly true for large datasets. To detect normality, we can observe the histogram of the residuals and the QQ plot of the residuals. These visual methods help us to determine if there are any deviations from normality. For a more formal check, statistical tests like the Shapiro-Wilk test, Kolmogorov-Smirnov test, and Anderson-Darling test can be used to determine whether the data follows a normal distribution or not. If our data is not normal, it is better to make our data to be normal. Some methods to normalize data include mathematical transformations, such as log transformations. Another approach is standardizing or normalizing the data set. Additionally, adding more data can help reduce the need for normally distributed error terms, as a larger data set can mitigate the impact of non-normality. This brings us to the end of our discussion. Thank you all for listening. Just a quick reminder, if you are new to my channel, please subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you never miss out my latest discussions. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Lastly, if you have any questions or suggestions, feel free to leave them in the comment section below. I will read and respond to each of them. See you in the next lesson.